Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. Thank you for listening to the Dr. Pat Show, uh, as well as Transformation Talk Radio. And thank you for now uh, listening to our new channel, Conscious Business. Yep, that's right. Those two words are in the same sentence. And we're really thrilled about it. Uh, You're going to see that channel of ours uh, continue to grow in ways that we don't even understand. Um, But conscious business is all about how do we create the lives we want? How do we bring it out into the world? How do we be part of an establishment that's all about creating our life stream through businesses? And then how do we do it in a way that consciously honors who we are as a people, each other, and the world? And we're very excited about that. And we've got a a great lineup that we're putting in place right now. So just bear with us as we, as we put all these new hosts in there. Thank you so much. Um, You know, the thing I love about what I do is I never know what Linda is going to line up and we got a copy or were made aware about Michael Goddard's, uh, Goddard's book not too long ago. And when we looked at this, when I saw it, and in, in, in it's an up-and-coming book, so you're getting it hot off the press here. And when we looked at it, you know, one of the things I thought about is what do we always search for? What are we looking for? Why sometimes do we feel like we're searching, searching, searching? And even after the search, we still have this pit in our stomachs. And so what might be behind all that? In Search of Lost Lives is Michael's fabulous book. And the question that uh, that he asks, and I see they, I'm already talking about the past lives people. The question that that gets asked is, what if you knew who the people in your current life were in your past life? The minute that I read that sentence, I thought, I got to talk to him. So he's written a memoir that is so rich, so filled. I don't, I mean, I hardly know where to begin our conversation, except to let you all know that throughout the show today, Michael has generously uh, gifted all of you with three copies of the book. So, you know, he started to search for the truth, the truth about death, how to attain everlasting bliss. And you're going to find out about this book and the many other books he has. But today he's joining us as someone that clearly understands what the seeker's journey is about and how many of us are part of this spiritual revolution. Michael, great to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Pat. And thank you for that fabulous introduction. I really appreciate it. Awesome. I just love you. I love what you're doing. Thank so you. here's I, the I deal. I love your, your focus about being, you know, about searching and being seeking. And it was reminding oh. me that my last, literally my last three lives were very much focused on, on seeking, you know, seeking. Uh, can we start there? The I would yeah. love to start there because um, I think it's so important and we don't talk about it enough when we're, it's because we don't connect the dots between seeking and lost lives. We don't. Mm -hmm. We seek and we think it's this and we think it's that. Can you tell us what the connection is? What you discovered the connection is between this ongoing search for fill in the blank and our lost lives? 
Well, well, you can look at it at, at certain levels. I, I think we're all searching because we're, we're separated from what I call the, the love source or God. So our mm-hmm. soul is separated from its, its home, which is pure, unalloyed bliss and love. So we always feel this background of loneliness, I feel, and we're searching for something that we're connected to, but we're not fully there yet. We're not fully conscious mm-hmm. of it. But I came in, I had been, as I mentioned, really been consciously seeking my past three lives. That's what I recovered. So I came in at a very early age, and um, just after I turned 11, I was at a religious service, uh, informal one, and I realized that, you know, kind of the organized religion was, was not what I was seeking. I was seeking the answer to death. I wanted to know what happens with death, what happens afterwards. Most important, I wanted, I needed, I had this utter compulsion to find the answer before I died. When I, like, looked at myself and pictured myself dying without knowing, I would just, I would go through this horrible physical transformation. I mean, I would mm. just start shaking. So from an early age, I started uh, searching, and I was very kind of aware of unusual, familiar feelings. The thing is, when the more you observe about yourself and the more conscious you are, you can pick up on what, what are sanskaras. Sanskaras are impressions from a past life. So these may be really keen feelings of deja vu uh, when you go somewhere and it feels utterly familiar to you and you don't know why and you haven't been there before, uh, but maybe you have. Or maybe you meet somebody like at the gym and you immediately begin talking as if you are old friends. Well, the truth is that you probably are old friends. So many people come across us who have come across us before and we've had all these different relationships with them. So I don't know. Here's, the, I'm, yeah, yeah, here's the thing I love about what you said. We have so many incidences, let me just call them, of of, of things like that, Michael, that Mm -hmm. happen, so many. And sometimes we stop. You know, Linda and I were talking the other day, uh, and she's listening to the show now, Mm -hmm. and we were so excited to to be talking with you because we've been friends for uh, since 1973. Mm -hmm. And we are two of the most different people you could possibly meet, right? Linda's like a triple Virgo. I'm a quadruple Sagittarius. Wow. But yet we have been best friends. Right. We, when, when uh, something happens that is not so good for her, uh, I am like immediately there. Mm-hmm. If something happens to me, she's here. There's no logic to it. And so it really does beg the question, you know, or maybe not even a question. Let's just get to to talk about it. Yeah. It's a connection that's you cannot explain in this lifetime by well, ins- by, yeah, by effects so most, of most this people lifetime. can't because basically no one is meant to know what you went through with your past lives. Because okay. for one thing, you would be aware of all the suffering you went through. Um, oh. And, and, I mean, imagine being, uh, you know, being born without legs and, you know, living in total poverty in the mm-hmm. in very difficult, you know, circumstances. So we're kind of, we each life is like a play and we play a character. So you and Linda may have been, um, you know, father and, and, and daughter in a past life. You don't know at this point. What was so thrilling for me was to uncover what, many of my current relationships were in past lives and in multiple past lives. And uh, it was amazing because all these intimations, like, that I even felt uncomfortable, like, why am I feeling that, you know, we, we've been lovers before, for instance, or why do mm-hmm. I feel like we're just kids uh, together? All these intimations were proven true. And that was that, you know, honestly, it was quite thrilling. Now, that, that was not something I went after. It just happened as part of my recovery of the lives. One day, uh-huh. it just started to totally come together, 
and I realized, you know, what contact I'd had in prior life with what I call a realized saint and why that saint was so familiar to me and why I felt such a pull to him. And it finally made sense. You know, then this had been growing literally for decades. When I first called uh, a visit to, to go to this prior home, and uh, it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. And, and I got there, and I just I felt like I had arrived. It was just so mm-hmm. moving and glorious. But not till like, 2013 did I really know and, and prove, as far as what I consider proof, that uh, I had met the saint in this prior life when I was part of the British Raj. And I just wow. decided to take a trip. I was pulled, so pulled, inexorably pulled to take a trip, and I did. And I was led right there. Mm. You know, this agony, if I could say, yes. this is my word, not yours, uh-huh. but the, there's an agonizing effect of having this empty spot mm-hmm. that you try to fill by all of the events of the lifetime you're living in, right? You go seek out a job to fill the hole that's going to make you a lot of money. You go right. seek out the love to fill the hole. And we're seeing so much of this, you know, right now in our society where right. we're seeking, 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 and looking ne- not necessarily in the right place. What uh, was it for you yeah. that helped you discover what you said was in the right so a key and important mm-hmm. to our existence. That's the mm-hmm. way it works in the physical world, where we're chasing after something to fill that hole. And people try it, you know, with power, money, sex, getting lost in their phones, anything. Uh, you know, so many people, the worst thing is their own company. And, and we really need to learn to love our own company. So I believe you were asking, what was it for me that... Yeah. Well, I just knew I had to keep searching, and uh, which was really a continuation of what I've been doing. My past, my last past life, I was uh, a part owner of an English office supply company, stationery concern, and I kind of spent that whole life seeking, doing nothing but reading, and 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 getting into all those things from that period, like Theosophy and Annie Besant and, and stuff. Stuff like that. So I was primed for that. And, um, but it's like I had read every book, and my mother was a well established artist, and we'd go into San Francisco and we'd go to the galleries. And after a while, I'd ask her if I could slip away, and she'd say yes. So I would go to this metaphysical bookstore on Sutter Street, and I would pull down book after book, and I'd look at the contents, I'd open the book, and I just knew this wasn't for me. So I was basically searching with a friend from high school, and um, <clears throat> I came back from my junior year abroad in England early. Uh, I was supposed to spend the summer in Greece, but I just felt a pull to come back. And uh, just before he was going overseas, he stopped by, and we had been searching really consciously together. And he had found what we were looking for, the this, this spiritual path that promised self-realization and God-realization basically, uh, ultimately, an end to life on the physical, uh, and that in an existence of unalloyed bliss. Now, <clears throat> the only way you can ultimately verify that is by finally attaining it. But after meeting the teacher, I just had no doubt. And quite honestly, Pat, after reading 10 pages of the preface, I knew that was for me. So in mm-hmm. this life, I was primed to do that. You know, that, this is my time for that. You know, for other people may not be meant to leave this plane. They may need to want to continue. You know, their lives may be lives of giving and selflessness. So, to me, though, the, nothing will really satisfy you till you reunite with the love story. That's that's my own philosophy. Mm, I love this. We're going to take a short break, Michael. When we come back. We're going to talk more about this fabulous book, In Search of Lost Lives, and we're going to give copies of the book away. When we come back, I want to talk with Michael about what happens when we discover a past life. What happens when we discover and get answers to the questions? What happens when we do all of that and 
all of a sudden, we have a new level of awareness to an action that we are meant to take. What happens when we have all of that and we don't do it? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Copies of this fabulous book away, giving this fabulous book away. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. everybody. Welcome back. Um, Listen, we have got copies of Michael's book uh, to give away in search of lost lives. Um, And before we go back to that question I asked, let's go ahead and give our first copy away. And also, if you've got questions for Michael, please give us a shout. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Um, one of the things that I would love to, uh, before we jump back into this is I want to make sure folks know, Michael, how to get a copy of the book and how to find out more about you. Uh, yes, well, they they could, uh, go to my website, goddard.com, uh, which is spelled God, G-O-D, dart, D-A-R-T. Think of a dart from God, uh, dot com. And that lists. Uh, that has uh, endorsements and excerpts, um, which, they, which they can read. And also there's uh, one document, uh, 29 Things That In Search Of Lost Lives Does. So I kind of, if there's a lot of uh, content in the book, it's just a long book. So yeah. to kind of give people a ability to focus on what uh, the book does, uh, I, I made a list of, of the type of things. Uh, 
for instance, of how women were fully equal in, in different societies in which I lived, actually in other planets. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people will find that interesting. For instance. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they would find that interesting, um, uh, especially and, and the in light. The are so far yeah. out. <laughs> Uh, very kind of, you know, using your mental powers to help people, basically. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of professions of my parents and me were, were, were that. And, oh. and virtually all the lives I detail the professions of my parents and, and myself. Mm -hmm. Well, let's give a copy of the book away. 1-800-930-2819. Um, before the break, I asked this question, and I would like for you to talk about it because uh, I'm reading the book, and there are many points in the book. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, before we even get to the question, tell people about how the book was written. I think folks should know that, and they'll see why I'm going to ask the question I'm asking. How was it written? Well, it was sort of a, an accumulation of, um, of seeking and paying attention to all my intima intimations, these memories of past lives. And, of course, I've been meditating daily since I was 19. But also for decades, I've been actually actively focusing on and growing my intuition. And uh, I went through a lot of extremely heavy uh, illness and surgeries for a period. And so I, I had to intuit exactly what I could eat from bite to bite. So I was doing that uh, for quite a long time. But all of a sudden, you know, I realized, I could know, you know, anything I wanted about my past life. So it just all started coming together. Uh, and at first I thought maybe at the most I'd have 20 pages, double space that I could give to a few friends. But it just kept growing and growing. And actually what it was, it's, it's hard to describe because it's so experiential, but basically my everyday consciousness was became connected with my higher consciousness. It was like having an elder wise person, which was myself, that I could draw from. You know, things would flow through automatically. Does that answer that at all? Yeah, it does. It does, because now it leads to the question that I was asking. And by the way, the first book has been given away. So let's go ahead and give another copy away. 1-800-930-2819. You know, I started the conversation, Michael, about mm -hmm. seeking. And I want to just broaden that for a minute and get back to my question. Seeking is something that it doesn't always show up, I don't believe, in the logical linear way. And what I mean by that is we don't wake up and say, I, I am going to go seeking today for this wounded part of my body, right? That, that would be kind of cool to do. And I think we do do that when we decide to look at past lives. But we start to behave in this lifetime in seeking behavior, I call it. And sometimes we find the thing. And so I ask you the question, what would happen is, is, as you're on your journey and you are seeking and you are discovering past lives, what would have happened if you stopped, if you didn't take further action? Because see, that's what I think happens to us sometimes. Mm -hmm. We seek, we find, we get a new level of awareness, and then we just don't know what to do with that. We meet the love of our lives who lives uh, 3,600 miles away. We know it, and we don't do something. And I'm just wondering, is there a connection between seeking, finding, and action? Well, I think there is. And... Um... In everything in life, I think the important thing is, is to find a way to tune in to the quiet, still, true inner voice that you, you have. Everyone has this. You know, you can call it your higher sense of knowing, your intuition. You know, if you meet somebody who lives in Australia who feels like a soulmate, well, you know, this may be the fifth life you've met, uh, you've met this person. And they may have been in your family, you may have been friends, business associates. So the ground, uh, all the seeds have been sown for this relationship. So if you turn your back on it with all these reasons, these mindy reasons why you yeah. can't do it, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a great person, uh, a great person who believes in going through things rather than 
theorizing about them. And that's saying something because I'm kind of a, a mental person. So, mm-hmm. but, and, you know, and sometimes when you're, when you're, you stop and you ask and look, uh, you know, look to other people, you, that's okay, but you can't really trust other people to give you the right answer, no matter mm-hmm. how smart they are, how much authority. I mean, uh, when I was in my 20s, I went to a few psychics because I was curious uh, what they would say, and I even asked them about my past life. And they all told me about all these glorious past lives. Well, the interesting thing, uh, Pat, is that once I began to recover them and know what was true, none of the past lives information I got from psychics was true. Nothing was even close. So that really confirmed, and I was the kind of person, whenever I had to make a decision, I would like take a survey of all the friends I had because of my low self-esteem. Uh, and then if I wasn't sure of it, I wouldn't go through with it. So this journey has really helped me to trust myself and have faith in myself. And, you know, we are all, you know, one of the, of, of the one great source of being. We, we all have the infinite within us. So to me, it's the learning to trust yourself and to know that you can know uh, what to do, and basically to never give up, to keep searching, and just to go to go where your your feelings take you, your your true and good feelings. Does that kind of? Yeah, uh, yeah, it does because it really let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about uh, uh, one other thing right now mm-hmm. is as you have beautifully documented your journey and what you've discovered. What would you say was the greatest gift, or shall I say greatest discovery gift, meaning you've gone through so much and are sharing so much. Is there any one, two, or three things that if you had not discovered them along the way, it would be quite disturbing for you? Well, the, the, the most kind of the greatest relief yeah. and, and gratitude I had was from when I recovered that I met this saint uh, two lives ago, and mm-hmm. everything fell in place. That was that was the first thing that happened. That was a major thing. But also, um, the thing <laughs> that kept coming up that I didn't look for was that it was my cohort of seven, which is what I called the seven mind and soul beings that I hung out with between lives. So I recovered, uh, and this was uh, this was a, a great boon for me. I discovered who these uh, that I was with seven people between lives. We were like in a spiritual learning school together, you know, with various spiritual teachers. And these are the the people I had the most incarnations with. And what was kind of miraculous is that they were all had all incarnated this current lifetime, and I had met all of them had very keen relationships. I mean, they're all people that when I met them, it was like I got busy because of the power of our past relationships. I was picking up on that. Uh, mm-hmm. And I also found out that they had, we were all alive together two lives ago when I lived in Britain, and they, they did as well. So that was the second uh, made greatest discovery that just blew my mind. Mm, and wow. uh, it was, so exciting, particularly for the one I had such a close connection with who, who died quite a few years ago. But when I met him, it was like, it's like you, you can feel the veils vibrating between you. And, and my feeling is I just want to tear them apart to see who this person is. There is a section in the book I think people might find really interesting. It's called Jumping into Old Friends. Oh. It was the experience I had. Um, I I didn't know. I this is, I explain what happens when you meet somebody that you've known before, and it's like yeah. it's almost as if your mind is wanting to jump into their mind to find out who is this person. Who yeah, are I know them. So it, I I knew I was going to write about it for like two years. Finally, it was time to write about it. I had no idea what life it was. Well, it turned out the life I wrote about was when I was a the term wasn't uh, current then, but I was a biologist in, in Cambridge in the 1400s. When I went to a dinner party and I had this experience of meeting, re-meeting a, a teacher when I lived in Sweden. In yeah. So that, that I think uh, that part 
people would find very interesting they could uh, relate to. And I tie in other people I had that experience mm-hmm. with. Yeah, uh, this was Eric, right? Are you talking about Eric? Well, uh, Eric is from uh, another life. He was like a best friend when I went to Copenhagen uh, yeah. alone, left my family. Mm-hmm. And his father uh, took me in to be part of the business. And Eric um, didn't want to have anything to do with the business. He wanted to be an explorer. He was like a, a Viking. This was like during the Viking age. Mm-hmm. And Eric, I ran into in the gym. And for years, we never talked. And I just thought, who is this person? Who is this person? Yeah. Finally, out of the blue, I was sitting down, which is unusual, had my back to the entryway. And he came in and he just started talking with me. And like we kept talking like for 40 minutes. And what was so interesting was that, you know, his, his father died and I took over the business with his mother. And he never came back from one of his uh, explorations. I think it was to the Gulf of Botnia. Mm-hmm. And we never knew what happened to him. And that was sort of like the big question that we never could answer. And I had this great desire to know. Well, I found out Eric came back in my life and I knew who he was. That that was wow. a great discovery I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for. Because he, you know, I was all in Copenhagen on my own. I'd left everything. And um, it was just so great for him to take me under his wing. And there are so many stories like this in the book. And I'm just so fascinated by it. But, you know, what I want to say is, I don't know if any of you have questions out there. Is there somebody in your life that has popping up that you're just scratching your head and you're saying, why do they keep showing up? Here's the question of all questions for those of you out there. Why do they keep showing up? And I know, Fred, thank you. I know I that just something about them that just ain't no good for me. Is there a lesson that I need to learn in this lifetime that has to do with the past lifetime? And how do I figure it out? Well, I'm not going to answer that question because Michael's here. He's going to take care of that. 1-800-930-2819. We're going to take a short break. Uh, I'm not even sure if we have a copy of the book left, but when we come back, you ever wondered about stuff like that? What about this relationship I'm in? 1-800-930-2819. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Stop thinking and start acting. And I'll tell you what repeated thinking does. It doesn't help you in creating your dream life. It actually creates a lot of unconscious stress. So remember how it feels when you think of something, but you don't do it. I want to call the doctor. I don't. I want to read a book. I don't. I want to go see a friend. I don't. I want to go on a diet. I don't. So there's many things where you think of something and you don't do it. And what happens is that when you don't do it, it creates the stress. Also undermines your own strength and confidence in yourself. So it's really important to get going. You have a thought, act it out, and you're done. Are you ready to make deep, lasting, transformative changes? Then tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio for Susanna Jameson's hit show, Love Light Sound Radio. During her show, Susanna inspires and supports spiritually and health-conscious individuals all over the world to reconnect with their heart, their inner peace, and balance. Love Light Sound Radio. Transformation happens here now. For more information, visit SusannaJameson.com. 
This is Debbie Pokornik with a break-free parenting tip. If you haven't been practicing active listening or not getting into some bad habits, it's a good idea to go back to the basics and remind yourself how to be a good listener. Here's an idea that might help. When your child comes to you with a story about her day, set aside whatever you're doing and give her your full attention. If you're in the middle of something that can't be put aside, tell her that you really want to be able to give her story your full attention and ask if you could continue the conversation at a specific time. So for example, this sounds like an important story and I'd really like to give it my full attention. Can we talk about it in 10 minutes when supper's in the oven? Active listening might sound like common sense, but often it's these simple skills that get buried in our parenting pack and easily forgotten or overlooked. Challenge yourself to practice this skill for a full week and see if you notice a difference in how much your child is sharing. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, amazing. I, I We're going to talk a little bit about what Michael and I were just talking about during the break. Um, and um, so those of you email me and say, we want you to capture what you're talking about during the break. OK, actually, we figured out how to do it. Um, but this is really the thing, Michael, before we um, jump ahead. Mm-hmm. I want to talk with you about what we were talking about during the break. Yeah. And that is we can spend an entire lifetime trying to figure something out instead of just doing it and following it. But before we go there, please tell folks how they can get a copy of your book and also um, how they can find out more about you because you also have other books too. Right. I have Spiritual Revolution, which yeah. Uh, it was named Best uh, Spirituality Self-Help Book by the Hollywood Spiritual yeah. Film and Entertainment Festival. And yeah, Bliss a was book. a uh, semi-finalist. Well, uh, probably the best thing to do is to go to my website to explore the book. And from there, they can go to Amazon and uh, and get the book. And uh, Perfect. there's a lot of information on the website. We're still uploading a little bit, but it's, it's basically ready for In Search of Lost Lives. And the website, again, is goddard.com, God, G-O-D, and Dart, D-A-R-T for Tom. Perfect. Um, and uh, we have given away two copies of the book, and I think, Benny, we're ready to go for a third. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Okay, so... We've pointed out a couple of things, and you have some fabulous examples in the book. But sometimes we we are seeking, we are searching, then we find. But we don't act on it. We don't follow our own intuition. We don't seek that out. We don't stop and talk to that person in the gym that, for whatever reason, we know we should do that. We don't take an action. You know, we don't move closer to a person we love because we have a million reasons and maybe we're not supposed to. But how do we know? How do we know what action to take? Are there signs or do we have to go deeper into the past lives? Well, um, not everyone can go into their past lives. So the best you can do, is, as I mentioned, is to develop your intuition. Rather than listen to all the, as you said, all these mental reasons for not doing it. Now, you can follow the sense of what feels good. I mean, you may come across a person who's supposed to be the best thing for you, like in a business deal. Something doesn't feel good. Well, step back and feel it out. That's that's the best thing you can do. You know, the main thing is always, uh, as we were talking during the break, is to move toward love and to move toward service while keeping your ego at bay. Uh, you know, our ego is really our worst enemy, and it can create all kinds of negativity. So the, the more positive you are, the more human you are. I, um, I, I give seven lives. I have different groupings of lives, uh, which were grouped that way when I was writing them out chronologically. But to make it an easier reading experience, we group the lives going back in time. 
But one of the groupings of lives is uh, lives where I had uh, an experience of the spiritual being enhancing the human experience. I'm sure most of the listeners are familiar with the quote, we are not uh, human beings having a spiritual experience or spiritual beings having a human experience. So right now we are having a human experience for 79 years, 18 years, 35 years, however long we live. The most precious gift, and I can't stress this enough, is your human birth. So people can spend their valuable moments, days, years, playing games, you know, that you know that get them away from being aware of death, or they can take steps and move toward what's really important to them. One thing I discovered uh, in, in Access in the Lives Pad is that each life had a spiritual purpose. And I had a very, very tough life in Poland, by the way. Uh, I was very poor. I was very unattractive. You know, my features look like pieces of oatmeal my brothers had thrown at me and had drifted away. Uh, I couldn't find a wife. Uh, I even employed a matchmaker. She gave up after three years. Hmm. And uh, my father was a drunk. Anyway, I was really shunned um, by all the elders of the village uh, or settlement I lived in. And I ended up committing suicide. And I call that life the deprivation. Mm -hmm. uh, because I deprived myself of that life. And I would have had a what I call a spiritual, an evolutionary spiritual experience. But I missed out on that opportunity. The other thing is, I, I feel we're given spiritual experiences. And this is really important and it's what we take with us. And um, the things that really happened well for me in past lives, completely different from committing suicide, is when I had a spiritual experience and I remembered it and I focused on it. And I loved it. And I wanted more. I, I feel, you know, the love source wants us to want love. You know, the highest, best, all-encompassing love. And if you read my book, you can see the going back, you can see the progression of how I continue to focus, focus, focus more on achieving that love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. And what I said earlier was, we seeking, 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 because we have, I called it a knot in our stomachs. Mm -hmm. It could be a hole, but it's a sense of incompletion. You know, it's a sense of emptiness. It's a sense of there's something here in front of me that I'm not seeing that would help me move forward along the way, along the continuum of things. And, you know, I'm touched by this, but I want to talk with you about the spiritual aspect of this, mm -hmm. the spiritual journey of this, because it's so important. You know, one of the things that happened to me along the way um, mm -hmm. to becoming me in this arena is six months after I joyfully discovered uh, <clears throat> this venue after dialing a wrong phone number and buying 13 weeks of airtime from an internet station in 2003. It was like, I know, isn't that the most ridiculous thing? Um, it was like coming home. Yeah. But I started to doubt myself and I got very sick six months after this. And by the way, it was the only thing I could do was to continue to buy airtime, thousands of dollars of it and talk about positive living and holistic wellness. That's really it. What happens sometimes in life for us when we have those experience? Is this our spiritual guidance system helping us to either get on track, stay on track, or move past, or move through this life so we can reconnect to our past lives as some people say, so we don't have to repeat the same thing. How true is any of that in what you discovered? Well, I, I think it's true, uh, and it's important there, it, to pay attention <clears throat> to signs and synchronicities and coincidences. You know, things often happen for a reason. Uh, you know, I, every person has their own individual journey. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to speculate on what guides 
people have or what mm-hmm. spiritual teachers they may have on in right. planes looking out for them. But everyone has like a higher mind. And mm-hmm. um, I do document when my higher mind became prevalent over what I call my lower mind. The uh-huh. lower mind is, is part of you that can be nasty, you know, be into greed, uh, yeah. just unabated lust. And the higher mind is the one that wants to give, to do service. So you want to always stretch your higher mind. Um, so let's get back to your question. I may be drifting mm-hmm. off. Uh, you, you asked me what, what we can do. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's to be in touch with your higher, your higher self, your higher mind. We have been, you know, I discovered that I'd had 4,137 human lives and just innumerable lives in other forms. Well, my, my soul, which is just, you know, a spark, uh, drop, whatever you want to call it, of love, has been buried by all this mind stuff. And I don't know if people believe in karma, but, but also karma. But in there, you know, I think our journey is to discover our higher self. Now, some people are meant to go back to the love source they're meant to stay here and, and do service, which is a very high thing to help to help people. That's just a very high thing, a very high calling. So, you know, you were following your, probably your higher self and, and taking this but on the surface of it may have sounded, looked ridiculous, but you were meant to do it. And you were talking about how you and Linda connected. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't really know. I mean, you might be able to know at this time why, you know, the whys and wherefores, which aren't all that important. But in lieu of that, you know, you can theorize. I was saying, well, maybe, you know, you may even be in the same kind of cohort of souls learning together, and you you plan this between lives. You know, who knows? Uh, Or it may have been, you may have had your own individual desires, which was a perfect meeting. You know, you wanted to to do the show, and she wanted to produce something to, to help people. So it's... To know the whys and wherefores, it's, it's almost a little bit, it can be a booby trap. It can be a mind trap trying to figure things out. You know, to me, always the main thing is to move toward love and be loving and to be of service. And to, to follow your path and not give up. You know, if it means, you know, going to some seminar uh, and paying $5,000, that's okay if it feels like something you must do. Or if it means taking off three days and just, taking walks in nature uh, and being quiet, give yourself permission to do that. And by the way, I mean, it may get a little repetitious in the book, but a lot uh-huh. of my spiritual experiences happened when I filled the pool, an yeah, ineluctable pool to go out and walk in nature. And yeah. even like once I was a very rich Dutch landed gentry, I never went walking. You know, I went with my foreman on my horse. But I did, and I had an extraordinary experience alone uh, of the infinite. I was a devout Catholic, praying twice a day on my knees, but I, I finally began to understand other members in the family, and I treated them better, and I didn't resent my sister's sons who were going to inherit all my riches. So heed those inner calls. That's the best thing I can say. Life is moment to moment, and when we just think and think about something, we're, we're like worrying it to death. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to me, in a way, there's a saying that the only sin is to worry, because when you worry, you're moving away from love. I want to uh, let's talk about that. Let's continue with that. All right. Worry. Let's talk about it. Uh, doubt and worry, I have felt, are uh, they're like twins. Yeah. Right. They're like little twins and they are the toxic twins in my mind. Yeah, this is my little personal label for them. And I say that because they're kind of insidious. They're, they show up and you can't even recognize that you're showing up, right? So right. all of a sudden you have worry. Let's talk about worry. And we don't say, oh, I'm worried. By the time we admit that we're worried, uh, we're like way far gone into the worry thing. But we start to worry about things. You know, what if I did do this and this happened? You know, what if I, and all of a sudden the what if I did it and this happens is a little thought that turns into a worry. How much of a showstopper is worry from getting us to discover 
ourselves and our past lives? How, how much you know, what, does worry and well, doubt get in the way? Well, it's the major blocker to uh, being in touch with your true higher self. It's really the lower self to kind of keep you embroiled in the mind, you know. And along with worry and doubt, I, I want to add anxiety. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people suffer from all kinds of anxiety, no matter what they do. So, you know, that's all, all fear-based. So it's, it's just, it's really blocking, but it's, it's really a matter of learning to build your own self-confidence and having faith in yourself. And it's a lifelong process. You know, life, life on, and here, particularly on Earth, as I discovered, is, is, is really tough. I mean, this is like a tough school. It's a school of hard yeah. knocks. So yeah. we just have to keep getting up. Um, and we have these ingrained mental patterns uh, from past lives, from how we were raised. And there are different uh, modalities, therapies to let go of them. Uh, you know, personally, I've, I've found psych K, psychological kinesiology, really masterful in letting go of subconscious beliefs that were sabotaging me that I didn't even know about. So there are so many healers out there you can turn to. And again, you always... You know, you can get advice from friends on who to go to, and but you always need to develop that inner trust, what feels mm-hmm. right, what feels good now. So th- th- there are ways to work on you, uh, on yourself, but it, it's essential to, to conquer the doubt and anxiety and also not be hard on yourself because you're going through it. It's just to be aware of it and move to a positive yeah. And let's talk about that sort of, you know, uh, there's a closing point to this that I want to touch upon. Mm-hmm. And that's the positive nature of being in search of lost lives and finding them. There's a positive nature and there's a positive result. What was some of the positive results you discovered? And thank you so much for today. Oh, thank you. It's just been a joy. Well, one of the main ones is with knowing myself. I, people are, many people would probably know the Greek injunction, know thyself. That's been a driving force in my life. And so recovering the past life explained so much uh, about me, about things that had happened, feelings, uh, talents I had, aversions. So knowing, knowing yourself has, has been one of the main, main things for me. And just confirming, it was just a total experience of confirmation that I, I'm very grateful I, I got to experience. Mm. Wow. Michael, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, again, I want to ask you, would you let people know how they can find out more about you? Because, um, you know, I, I, I must say, I, I pretty much have read all your books. Um, you know, this notion about a spiritual revolution is just beautiful. Um Please tell them how they can find out more about you, how they can stay connected to you, and how they can get a copy of In Search of Lost Lives. Sure. Um, I would say go to my website, goddart.com, G-O-D, another D, A-R-T.com. Um, they, uh, and they can explore those books there. And by the way, Spiritual Revolution has a summary of the 52 principles of spirituality. People yeah. found it really, really helpful. And I'm going to start uh, getting uh, more active on Facebook. My Facebook page is called More Bliss. Please like uh, More Bliss. I'm going to be posting an awful lot uh, starting next week as we near the publication date. I love it. Thank you so much. One last question. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? Well, what pops into uh, what pops up, Pat, is, is to move toward love and have faith that everything is is happening for a reason and to to just be true to yourself and know that you are a spiritual being having a human experience and uh, you are moving toward love and all those hard feelings the empty feelings the holes they can be filled ultimately you just have to have faith and that was my main spiritual lesson when I gave up almost last life is I got an infusion of the necessary faith so Feel good about yourself and have faith that everything is going to work out. 
I love it. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you thank for joining. You. And for those of you out there, um, thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on, and keeping Be Benny very busy during the show. The book is In Search of Lost Lives. Uh, you can Google it. You can find out more about Michael. And remember, you know, we can be seeking, but let's not seek in agony. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ben. I really love you. It was awesome. And for those of you out there, we've got another hour coming up right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Have a great rest of your day. And I can be saved. Tides that I tried to swim against. Put me down upon my knees. Oh, I beg, I beg and please sing him. Come out of things I said. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.